Hello, good morning once again to our listeners, wonderfully made women, and of course our wonderfully made men on this show listening to us on Wonderfully Made Woman Talk Show on Radio Africana. Thank God it's Friday. Are you one of those who is always happy when it's Friday? <laughs> I wonder if we actually rest during the weekend. But well, we are here again. And it's been a very, very cold morning, and it's raining. You know how people say Manchester, Rainchester? So always with our, you know, jackets ready for the rain. We are here this morning to talk about, you know, the things that affect women. This is Wonderfully Made Woman Talk Show, and we are here every Friday at 11 a.m., you know, to talk about us to celebrate women as well. And like I always say, do you know that Wonderfully Made Woman is not just a radio show? But before we talk about Wonderfully Made Woman and the things we do, my name is Ehino and I'm your host for this show. Please. I want you to invite your friends to participate in this program today. It's going to be a very, very interesting time with my guest, and we'll be addressing one of the biggest issues, you know, that women are facing in our community, in the UK, in Africa, you know, all over the world. And today's topic is female genital mutilation with me on the show is a woman or a lady that I respect so much she's so full of energy you know ready to help ready to assist involved in so many organizations you know and do you know that she's one of the first we, uh, women we had when we started Wonderfully Made Women Dance Group. I'm sure a lot of you always see her on our posters. You know, we actually use her for our posters when we're talking about dance. She teaches how to dance. She's an FGM campaigner, you know, and that is why I invited her today. There was, I think it was months ago last year, I saw you on BBC radio, you know, talking about FGM. And all those times that you used to come for dance, I never knew that, you, you, you know, you are one of those fighting against female genital mutilation. And since then, I honestly, honestly respect you for that. Because it's not an easy thing to talk about. No, not, not to talk all. of going out to pour your heart out about it. So I appreciate I appreciate that the work that you do. So this morning, before we go on a music break, I want you to introduce yourself to the public and the work that you do. Please don't forget to talk about our dance. <laughs> no, I won't. Just joking. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, my name is Maria Tusise. I'm an FGM campaigner. I um. I volunteered for NASTEC and I'm a peer mentor for the community. And mainly, I'm a wonderfully made woman person, a dancer, a drama, and everything. How can I not be a wonderfully made woman? You are. You I are, am. You I are. are you look made. it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And um, if you can also tell them you know, your country. You know where you're from, because two weeks ago we actually brought somebody from Nigeria who went through FGM at the age of 15. But yours is different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so if you can let the viewers know your country and you know where where you did your FGM and what age before we take mm -hmm. a music break. I'm from Gambia, and I had my FGM when I was five years old. Five years. Yes. Did five you hear years. that? Five years old. Our listeners, please, I want you to pay attention to this program. I want you to share it on your page because you never know. You never know that woman, that young girl that is in pain right now, you know, that has negative effect as a result of, you know, this FGM they've gone through or they're about to go through. 
a girl at five going through FGM. Yeah. The emotional was I traumas. in Sierra Leone or no? It was in Gambia. In Gambia, yeah. And uh, because I am a Sierra Leonean, but um, actually, I know Gambia more than Sierra Leone because so my you dad grew up is in Gambia. Gambia. Yeah. So um, the emotional stress, the emotional effect, the after effect is something that we don't know because I think I oh, I talk about that on BBC uh, One. I said if. I'm, I'm sure if my grandmother or my mother's grandmother or her grandmother knows the emotional effect and the side effect and the later effect, I'm 100% sure they will not let will their not children not go it. through it. Yeah, They will not do no, it. No, they won't. They will not do it. No, they won't. Wow. We're going to take a music break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about the work that we do in the community and we will continue. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Wow, welcome back to Wonderfully Made Woman Talk Show on Radio Africana. Thank you to all our listeners and those, you know, watching on Facebook. You know, we appreciate the fact that you've taken our time to listen to us. That music, you know, an emotional one from Yeka, and it says, help. You know, so many girls are, you know, crying in pain. They have no one to talk to about this issue. Before we continue, I want to let the viewers know and the listeners know that Wonderfully Made Woman is a registered charity in England and Wales. And the aim of this charity is to help women and girls bring back their confidence in every area of their lives and to make them value themselves. So whether you're married, single, separated, divorced, or a widow, help is available for you. 
Do you feel worthless because of what you have gone through or still going through? Do you feel there is no hope anymore? Do you feel insecure and do you believe you can never make it? Are you thinking of how to bring up your children in the right way and do not know how? Is your marriage at the edge of breaking down? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, then Wonderfully Made Woman is the best place to seek free help where you will meet wonderfully made people who can assist you live a wonderful life. At Wonderfully Made Woman, we offer free support and counseling, domestic abuse training and awareness session, confidence building, dance um, session, dance group, you know, hate crime awareness, radical activities. We have coffee morning. And do you also know that Wonderfully Made Woman is part of the Manchester Maya Project? Manchester Maya Project is a partnership of eight organizations. You know, Sahili, Wonderfully Made Woman, Boa Academy, which is Key 103 FM, Anana, Wain Society, Himat, Women's Voices, and CDM UK, working together to support black, Asian, minority, ethnic, and refugee women and girls in Manchester. And that project is funded by the Big Lottery Women and Girls Fund. So every Tuesday, 10 to 2, we have our support and counseling. On Wednesday, we have drop-in, coffee morning, the dance session, and awareness session. And every Thursday on appointment, we have another support and counseling session. Before I continue, we've been raising awareness on female genital mutilation since the beginning of this year. And we have two, we've had two events now. Last week was a very, very great event at the uh, Manchester Communication Academy. And on the 29th of this month, two weeks from now, next two weeks, Wednesday, Wonderfully Made Woman will be having, you know, the FGM event. So if you're listening to me right now or you're watching me on Facebook and you have experienced it, and is affecting you negatively, negatively, or you know someone who has, have experienced it, or they're about to experience it, or you're interested in raising awareness, like our dear sister, please, on that day, 29th of March, at 10.30, you need to be at Transformation Community Resource Center at the back of the Longside Police Station. So you welcome back. Before I allow um, Maria to, to share her experience, what is FGM? What do you see when, or what, what is your opinion when you hear FGM, FGM, FGM everywhere, circumcision? When I was growing up, I just felt, okay, circumcision was for men anyway. Then later I realized that women go through circumcision, but I never had interest because I didn't go through it. I, I'm not sure any of my family members went, I don't know anyway. Until recently, I said, said okay, let me even know what this thing is really about. And it's amazing, you know, what it is. But the Home Office describes FGM as all procedures involving the partial or total removal of the external female genitalia. Did I pronounce it well? <laughs> <laughs> or any other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. Mm -hmm. So when you do that with, without the doctor's uh, uh, advice, that is what we call female genital mutilation. The World Health Organization estimates that Three million girls undergo some form of pro form of the procedure every year in Africa alone. Three million girls mm -hmm. in Africa alone. Yeah. That's terrible. I know. That's terrible. And that is why we are crying out for people who are interested in this thing to come out to help. We need to speak out. We need to put a stop to FGM. We need to put a stop to it. So back to my, my guests for today. You know, I was saying earlier on that 
all the time I've known you for over two years now, mm -hmm. you know, you've been active in the dance group, teaching women, confidence building, you know, African dance. There was no way I would have known that first that you were circumcised or it affected you in any way or that you were even a campaigner. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to realize that FGM is even worse than domestic violence because with domestic violence, people are beginning to talk about it. Not until recently, I realized that most of my friends actually went through FGM. It, 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 it's sad. It's I sad. Know. So I want you to tell the public your experience. I mean, two weeks ago, somebody came and said, okay, at, at the age of 15, she could remember everything. At the age of five, you were circumcised. So did you know that you were being circumcised or you knew later when you grew up? No, I knew I was being circumcised because I f begged my parents to be circumcised because I come from a, I come from a, a, a bag, uh, I'm a mandingo. So a mandingo background, every woman has to be circumcised. Always, when I was young, I know it's culture, but they always said it's, um, it's religious reasons. Mm -hmm. And you have to, because otherwise you'll be outcast, or you might not get married, or you're, you know, you, you have to. You don't have a choice. It's something that you will even beg your parents to do it because you'll have a new clothes. You beg your parents to, yeah. to, to circumcise you. Yeah, and there's uh, millions and millions and millions of cats. So when you're begging, do you know the effect? Do you know that it's going to be painful, or is just something that... You know that was uh, you know popular in your community thank you that's all all i wanted to do was just circumcise because everyone was doing it and everybody i know do it and then i was like okay and then uh, i didn't know and uh, the pain was so painful i can never forget it because um i remember my experience i will never forget was i don't want to pee because oh. you know when they cut you i bleed so much because I have lupus now, I know that. But those people, they don't know. And then they cut you the same blade with everybody. And then I, mm. I couldn't pee, so I had to pee myself. And I don't get mm. changed until in the morning. And then I, I can't forget that pain. That pain. pain will never get out of my mind. That so how pain, long did that pain um, what, stay for? It stays with me for, for as long as I can remember. After two weeks... They celebrate, you get out, but the pain stays as long as like two, three years, and the emotional pain, you know, begins. So, did you that. go to see the doctor for that? No, I didn't, because I didn't know. You don't and there know. was no medication? No, there's no medication because in Africa, what they do is they use leaves, they pound them together, to, to and then to put it, to heal it, to put it on you, and then they just put a, you know, like, you just sat there like that with your legs open. Oh, my God. And if you, God, is so, I can't never forget that pain. So does this still happen where you come from? Well, you, well, they did say they stop it. The president did stop it, but it does happen. It happens even in England. Of so, course, yeah, yeah, we know it happens in yeah. the UK. Yeah. Do you know, our listeners, that what we're talking about is not just in Africa. Is actually happening in the UK. Mm -hmm. You know, last year during the summer period, it was so bad that at the border, at the airport, they were actually looking at the young girls mm -hmm. traveling. And if they saw any sign that so this girl was not safe, they actually make sure that that girl doesn't travel. Mm -hmm. And is that bad mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. even in schools they begin to raise awareness mm -hmm. you know if you're a young girl and your parents are telling you you know during the summer or we're going to a long holiday there's going to be a festival and you could sense that this is what they're going to do please speak to your teachers speak to the social service speak to somebody who can help you even your GP you can speak to your GP please so, uh, Maria, too, why are you passionate about, you know, the, I, I see the energy mm -hmm. you use. There is no FGMM event I've gone to that I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There is no event that I don't see you. Mm -hmm. You know, the passion. Is it because you went through it? You feel, oh, people shouldn't go, in, go through it. What is that passion in you that makes you go all the way out, you know, to talk about this thing um it was only three years ago that because, you started talking. yeah because fgm is is um in my community is called sunnah 
and oh. uh, it's, it's a secret society. You don't talk about it. Even friends never talk about it after it's done. It's a secret society. You can never talk about it. So they warn you not to talk about it. Yes, because it's a secret society. You don't talk about secrets. Like if you are young and you go to a society that hurt you and then they say don't talk about it, you don't want to talk about it because you think they might hurt you again. So three years ago, I was just talking to somebody and the person was telling me about FGM. I was so angry. I told the person that this is my religion and my culture and I don't want to talk about it. And they even so far that she was like, do you want to do a FGM course? I'm like, no, I don't want to do FGM course. I'm not idle to go and listen yeah, to so people, people, you know, talking bad about my religion, my culture. Wow. Yeah, that's how defensive I was, was. about FGM. Wow. But when I went to this training, I went there because I didn't have anything to do. Sitting there, listening to people talking, listening to psychiatrists, listening to people, all the side effects that were written on there, on that board, was me. Oh. And then all of a sudden I was thinking, oh, yeah, so yes, yeah. No wonder I'm going through no this. Wonder no wonder I'm going through this and most of my friends are going through this and most of my friends were going through even worse. Because what you know is what you did. For example, I have type 1. Some people have up to type Absolutely. 3, which is really, but people don't talk about it. I have personal friends, close friends that went through type 3, and then I saw that's, what they're going that's through. That's type 3. If you want to know what is type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, mm. then you need to be at this event on the 29th. Yes. You know, the first time they, uh, your nurse tech mm. came to wonderfully made woman to raise awareness i could not stand that training session i know i know i had to go back to the office i, I could not mm -hmm. it's terrible yeah. it's terrible mm -hmm. you know so when you went for the training so and then i said okay i'll go back the next day because it's seven weeks training and i keep oh. going and i keep going and then from there i was so personal because i was angry i was angry that how come we never talk about this Mm. How come I didn't know about this? How come all these things happening to me and my friends, but we still don't know? This is the reason why. But then after one week, I stopped getting angry. I like, you know, they didn't know. Mm. So because they didn't know, didn't know. I'm going to go out there and mm. try talking about, talking about it. And because I've been through it, so people trust you when you tell them that you come from that background. Because yeah. then they can listen to you. So mm. that's when I start going to the community. I say... Mm. Pay a mentor as a pay mentor and start talking about you know talking to women about it and then uh, you know so many sometimes I go with our social workers and okay. then uh, talk because most of those women come from my country Sierra Leone Gambia Nigeria mainly mm. uh, West Africa mainly yeah. and then I speak most of the languages so I try to go and help them because people don't understand this they think that they're going to take their children away from them yeah. and then when you tell them they some people cry because if you know the side effects of um, FGM you will never give you will never let your child have it have you it. have it already and you're gone and that's mm. it you can't do anything about it they can try and you know help you GP help you but I don't mm. think it's gonna after all those years I don't want to go through another pain you know in my p private part because oh, yeah. yeah so what what was your own side effect oh god um, because yeah. some people say I, uh, I have problem with like the event we had last yeah. week where some people say you know with my marriage I, I, you know, the lady that was crying on mm. the video that mm -hmm. when her friends are talking about how they have intercourse mm -hmm. with their spouse mm -hmm. and enjoys it, she feels pained, mm -hmm. she feels cheated mm -hmm. because she cannot enjoy mm -hmm. it. And that has affected her own relationship. Why some say, well, I had it and I enjoy my, my, my sexual life. Mm -hmm. So it's both ways. No, so, it, it depends on the type. Type this that is you where did. the types come from. Comes from. Because so. when you do some people who did type one, which is mainly in West Africa, yeah. um, <coughs> it's different. Sorry. Yeah. Because some people take a little bit out from the the clitoral. The clitoral. Yeah. But in, for example, in in other other people, just take a loads of it. And then, for example, if they take a bit, you might enjoy. Six. intercourse mm. more than the person that they're they taking everything out but still if they take 
anything out of you you can't have a proper intercourse as like good a, as somebody who per, yeah because yeah, yeah, my friends yeah. they will be like after two weeks two days thinking oh it's been a long time since they have an intercourse for me it can take me a year before i even think wow so i have to be you know what i mean you know you side really effect. need to be in the mood thank so, you so you. you don't think about no and I, that's why i have to love someone before i actually wow. think about going out with them because i can't fake anyone i can't you know and i am better than other people who because of the way it's been done mm. they can never have if you know the way the, you know those types you can't have you can't have intercourse because it's not like the man is beating on something because it's mm. all gone so it's beating mm. on no place so you get pain and the other pain is you have a bad bad period pain Wow. Heavy that's, so pain. that's a very bad negative, a very bad effect. Effect, yeah. Mesro pain. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't know about that. Yeah, you do. And uh, if you're telling your friends about how much you have in pain when you're having intercourse and they're laughing at you, and then you think about all your people that have intercourse, like hundreds of those people, all that have that pain, mm. and you put another hundred that don't have intercourse, all of them enjoy intercourse. Mm. So what are we talking about? Mm. So which means... We are our pet. I don't know. Like I said, they didn't know. They didn't know. But I will never put anyone in 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 uh, FGM. I will never, and that's why I'm very happy and very passionate, and I want to make awareness and empower women to listen. I and, think you're mm. doing a great job. I mean, Thank for you. BBC to now recognize you as <laughs> an FGM campaigner. Thank you. Another reason I brought you out today because we have listeners, we have viewers. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about. You know how bad FGM is. We talk about how we can stop it, how we can make sure that these young girls, like you said, if you have been through it, you don't want your daughters to go through it. Mm -hmm. And we have you work with a lot of asylum seekers mm -hmm. who actually are saying, I can't go back home because mm -hmm. I went through this thing. My daughters will go through it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the government, the home office, is actually paying attention to Africans? Who are saying this thing? Because most time you see that they put in application, they go to court and the home office is saying no, we don't believe you. Mm. Or there was a case I had um, on Wednesday. She said the home office said, well, yes, you're from Nigeria, and in Nigeria they've they've placed a law that FGM is now a crime. But she was trying to say yes, he's wanting to place put a law is another thing to implement that law. And she tried to tell them that where I come from is a man's world. If they do it to my children, to my daughters, there's nothing I can do because mm -hmm. I don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. So how do when you meet these women who tell you their problems and they're, they're telling you that, Maria too, I'm scared to go back. Do you think that the government is actually listening to them or do you think that the home office needs to pay more attention to our people i'm talking about africans because i've realized that most asians they get away with it mm -hmm. oh fgm we know that asians they do fgm they get their visa but nigerians Ghanaians, zimbabwe you know it's like there's a bit restri a bit of restriction mm -hmm. like they don't believe them and that pains my heart if if the home office the government is saying this art is bad and someone is actually coming out to say i've gone through this thing i don't want my daughters to go through it or i haven't gone through it but i know that if i take my children to africa they're going to do this yeah, circumcision and i don't want to go back do you think that those women are actually getting help no thank you you bring this topic because i know a lady who is from gambia and her family, they are cutters. They perform FGM. Wow. And she's been here seeking asylum because she, if she go back home, she have to see the next person to take over. And wow. still, and I saw her in London last two weeks ago, and she was crying because they still can't believe her. So uh, when I talked to her, what I told her was that I don't understand why, because these people, they're trying to stop FGM. Exactly. But they're sending people to go back to Africa, Africa, who are going to be performing FGM. FGM. They know that 
FGM can't be stopped. Like I said, Gambia has stopped FGM, but only that's the word in the village. You come from Africa. Yes. No law is no law applies to the villages, mm -hmm. and most people who does FG who do FGM they come from the villages or they take you to the village. The village. So how do you expect somebody who came here for protection from FGM something that you want to stop is the government supposed to be helping us? We've been talking about this so FGM, often. Yeah. They're supposed to help victims of FGM and they make a history out of them. Otherwise, FGM is not, it's never going to stop. It's, it's not like they are yeah. safe when they go back home, yeah. no. And like I said, even if you are 25 years old, when you go back home, if FGM is your it's, culture, you have, you to, have do to do it. it. So who is safe to go back home? They know go. that. And then these people are fighting and telling them no. So we, this is why we are fighting and making awareness so that the Home Office can pardon the people that are here and all the people that are coming to seek asylum because FGM is not something that Africans are going to stop. Definitely. Why do you think that we are stopping people from going to Africa? Because they know that they're going to exercise FGM on them. Yeah. Then why didn't they stop the people that are here? They want to send them back, back home, home just so that it can be illegal. exercised on them. Yeah. That's my own take out of that. And that is what I always say. I'm happy you're here today. Thank and, you. You know, when I was here two weeks ago and last week we were talking about the laws, uh, you know, guiding FGM. One of the things I also mentioned is, please, if you're listening to this show or you're watching and you're a councillor, an MP, you're involved in the community, you're in Manchester or in the UK, and... You know, you know that you can help us. We need your help. We have a lot of service users who are in this situation. There was a lady who came to the office on Wednesday after the dance session. She broke down yeah. because she knows that if she goes back, her two children will be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And yet the Home Office is saying, we don't believe you because in Africa they've said, is illegal. Mm -mm. We are telling you that we are from Africa and we know that these things don't just stop. If the Home Office is trying to stop this act, then they need to hear us. They need to, you know, know how it works in our country. Mm -hmm. It's our country. So please, I'm begging the government, we need help. Africans, black Africans, we need help. We need help. We need to stop it. Mm -hmm. We need to protect our young girls. We need to protect our daughters. I didn't go through it. Yeah. But I've seen videos and I've seen people who have gone through it mm -hmm. and they've started speaking out. I cannot imagine allowing my daughter to go through that process. I know. I can't. And if we are in a country where this UK is so good that they actually know how to protect women. They protect. That's one thing I love about this country. Mm -hmm. They protect. Whether you're going through domestic violence, please help us with this FGM. Our women are suffering. Our young girls are suffering. We need help. We need help. Yeah. So, um, talking about the awareness, the campaign that you, you, you do with um, NESAC, do young girls come out to, to, do you go to schools? Do they actually come out to say, I've gone through it? Um, no, uh, they don't. But if you go to schools, because um, I don't do go to schools, but Peggy and uh, the okay, other ones, go, they do go, to, go schools, to schools. Yeah, But we do have um, young girls, for example, if they have the, sometimes they get matured and then they start having these pains and they don't know where oh, it comes it from. Comes and then from. sometimes when they went, go to the doctors, and they tell them their backgrounds, their culture, where they come from. They sometimes, you know, send them and prefer them to Nestec so to mm -hmm. talk to them. And then that's where sometimes they find out that, you that's know, they've been through, through it. FGM. Yeah, FGM. Ah. Probably they don't know. <coughs> and, uh, Sorry, I'm having a very bad cough this morning. It's okay. Yeah. And the weather is not healthy. I know. And then uh, they always say that, you know, Teach, the teachers as well, the social workers, to check that, you know, after the summer holiday, to check the on, children. you know, the children. Okay. Because if a child is very active and outgoing, and then when they come from holiday and they're very quiet and scared and, you know, so separated, you should report it, mm. yeah, so that they can get checked. If they've done if it. If they've done it, yeah. Because like I told you, it's not stopping in Africa. 
they know that. I, you know that. Yeah, I know that. I know. Africa is a place where in the capital they can say, oh, you stop. In the villages, they don't. This is their life. <laughs> You know, true, for them, true. they think that, you know, this is what is going to save the, my the child. child. This is what I'm going to save my grandchildren. You don't mm. want your child to be insulted. Wow. You know, it's never going to stop there. So if somebody come to me, I know what's going on. I'm from Africa and I know what I went through. And I was working in the home office. And you came and you tell me your story. I'll give you your paper because I know that I know what yeah, you're going through. And I will actually try to protect your children going through that. Because so, that's why I said sometimes yeah. it's nice to, for someone to be through it and then talk to that yes. person because they are more helpful. And, and you see the victims opening up. Yes, more. yeah. You see them opening mm -hmm. up, you know. It's, 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 it's sad. It's very sad. It's, 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 it's emotionally sad, yeah. it's sad. It's emotionally. So these women that they want to deport, what, what steps do, does NASDAQ take to make sure that they're not deported? Well... I don't, I don't know. I haven't um, actually been, uh, they do take some of, I do, mm, sorry. I haven't been across any woman that's been deported. They do <coughs> actually okay. keep the refusing them. But they don't deport them. Yeah, they don't deport them mainly. Most of the people that I know, and most of them are my friends, they are not deported. They do get, you know, send them, no, I don't believe you. I believe you. Mm. But like I said, Nestec is a very helpful place. They do help you through the home office as well. Like, Peggy, they are there. I'm just a pay mentor. So Peggy is <laughs> up there. And you there. soon be there now. Yeah, and uh, Jara, they are yeah. right there. Yeah, they help. So they go, they do all that thing. Mm. So they do help a lot. Peggy, you know, write lots of letters. And if if you come, and you know, the emotional help as well, because I have a, I have a group in Salford that is, okay. that happens once every every month. Okay. And it's on, about FGM. So when you come and you have a problem, you have one-to-one -one with Peggy. And then okay. you go and see you go and see uh, her in Nestec, in which is in Rochdale. In Rochdale yeah. And then yeah, he's very emotionally helpful. And then sometimes, you know, you can go to the hospital and then you get letters. So those all those can help you f help. to stay here, yeah. yeah, because it's it's a very not only emotional but you can have physical problems as well. Because mm. I know some of my friends who have kidney problems just because of the FGM as well. Wow. Yeah. Is that bad? FGM is that bad, yeah. Um, I had my friend, one time we were talking, we were having a training, and this lady said something that I can never forget. He, she said, if God didn't want it there, she wouldn't have put it there. True. Why are they taking it off? Wow. Yeah. Which and, is true. Yeah. I mean, he, he created us. Yeah. If he didn't want it there, mm -hmm. you know, why, why would you? Take it away. Why are you taking it off? What makes you feel it's not good? If it mm -hmm. wasn't good, God would not put it there in the yeah. first place. Yeah. You know? Please, if you're listening to us, yeah. you know someone who is going through FGM. There is help for you. Don't stay silent. You know, don't associate, uh, you know, isolate yourself anymore. Because if you are in the UK, there is help for you. You have no reason to to be isolated. You have no reason to be depressed anymore because we have, you know, organizations that are actually helping people with, you know, people who have gone through FGM or having the side effects mm. at the moment. You know, during one of the training, a lady was saying that when they have this FGM and they want to um, have sexual intercourse. Some actually have to go through um, surgery mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, enjoy their spouse. Mm -hmm. I can't understand. I, like you said, if our grandmothers knew about mm -hmm. this, they wouldn't do it. No. If they know the effect. Mm -mm. And we are lucky because we are here. Mm -hmm. So imagine those who do not even know whether whatever illness they have now is as a result of FGM. Mm -hmm. That is why we are not raising awareness only in the UK. If you're in Africa, any part of the world where this is being practiced and you want to be part of this campaign, please make sure you contact Wonderfully Made Woman on 078 
201 or you can send a message on our Facebook page. It, 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 that's easier for a lot of people. Or you can email info at wonderfullymadewoman.org. And if you're in the UK or in around Manchester and you feel you just need somebody to talk to on the 29th of March, Maria too, you will definitely be, I'll there. be there. Peggy will be there. I'm, you know, I'm not even going to be. We'll have professionals on ground at our office that you can speak to. You know, talk about this thing. Talk about it. I know two women who said to me they're over 50 now. And they said the reason they didn't get married was because of this. Mm. Yeah, they can stop it. Some and I asked them, did your parents know? Did your family say no? They were just complaining, get married. But they couldn't tell their family that. I've tried to have a relationship that, you know, never worked. And they decided, you know what? I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to have children. That is a very bad effect. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine a woman, you know, God has created you to, to have children, mm -hmm. to enjoy your life. And that person is being denied of this thing. What else is left for that woman? Nothing. You don't have a partner. Mm -mm. You don't have children to call your own because you went through FGM. That is why it needs to stop. We need to stop it. We need to stop it. I want as many women, you know, listening to us, or even men. You have doctors. You have sisters. Mm. Your sisters have daughters as well. You know, there's nothing wrong when men actually come to support this campaign, to say, you know what, enough. We do not want our daughters to be caught. It will go a long way. It, it will actually go a long way. We're just going to take a music break, and um, when we come back, we'll be talking about the event we're having on the 29th of March. Please stay tuned. <laughs> to wonderfully made woman talk show and i hope you've been um listening and i also hope that you know the topic of today has really helped someone out there that song was from praise a woman's need a woman needs to be loved a, need, a woman needs to enjoy her life how can a woman be loved if she's you know going through pain 
as a result of this FGM. Please help our women, help our girls. Do you know that FGM is illegal in the UK? Under the Female Genital Mutilation Act 2003, it is an offence in England, Wales and Northern Ireland for anyone, regardless of their nationality and resident status, to perform FGM in the UK, assist the carrying out of FGM in the UK, assist a girl to carry out FGM on herself in the UK, and assist from the UK or a non-UK person to carry out FGM outside the UK on a UK national or permanent UK resident. So, if you practice FGM in the UK, you are caught. You go to jail for that. Yes, you do. You do. And if you think, okay, I'll take my daughter to Africa or anywhere to go and perform FGM, when you are caught or your daughter comes out, comes back to the UK to speak, you will still be guilty of that act. And do you know, even if you're here as an illegal immigrant or you came as a visitor to the grandmas out there, you know, you come to the UK and say, okay, I'm a visitor, I'm not British citizen or I'm not resident in the UK so I can come perform and go. No, if you are caught, you are going to be arrested for that. So please, if you want to speak to somebody on the 29th of March, you need to be at the FGM awareness event. You need to be there. And I also know that the law says that any person found guilty of an offense under the Female Genital Mutilation Act 2013 will be liable to a maximum of 14 years imprisonment or a fine. You know, they actually increase it from five years to 14. Wow. And I'm even begging the government, please increase it to 20. <laughs> I know, I know. It, 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 this is worse than murder. Yeah, it's a lifetime effect. Honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm grateful that that was actually increased from five years to, to 14, 14 years. years. Well so done. if you are caught, it's no longer five years if you think, oh, UK, I'll just stay there. It's now 14 years. Mm. Think of 14 years of your life. <laughs> being behind the bar mm. just because you want to you know do this cruel art to your daughter to your wife to your sister to the women out there you're going to live in uh, or stay in the prison for good 14 years and if you are in the government you know a lawmaker we're begging please increase it to 20 25 years you know <laughs> so they know the effect of yeah. it because even after 14 years, you come out of jail and you're free. Yeah, but, but that, that person yeah. is still there mm -hmm. in pain, you know, living a life that she never asked for. I know. Living a, a very sad life. Mm -hmm. Thinking that it's real when other people have been fun. That is it. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's really sad. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my God. This is heartbreaking. And I'm beginning to... You know, have passion. Maybe I should join the campaign as well. Maybe you should join the <laughs> campaign because you do help yes, lots of I'm women. Wonderfully made woman yeah. is going to join the campaign because not until I was involved in this project, mm -hmm. I never knew most of those dancers were mm -hmm. victims of mm -hmm. FGM. Yeah. They just come dance at times they sit down, you're thinking, what's wrong with them? Mm -hmm. Not until this. So you never know. Until you join the campaign, mm -hmm. you may never know that that's your friend, mm -hmm. your neighbor, you know, your your friend, your child's friend, you know, they are actually going through this pain. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are calling on women in Manchester on the 29th of March. Please come to Wonderfully Made Woman. And this event is a partnership of Nestec. You know, your group is doing a wonderful job. Oh, my group is wonderfully made women too. Honestly, remember, yeah. they are wonderfully made women doing fantastic job mm -hmm. in Manchester, helping women out of this pain, out of this depression. You know, when I saw them, uh, you know, in the two events that we've had, how women were speaking their mind out. At the end of the event, you see them, you know, communicating mm -hmm. with others, feeling a bit relieved mm -hmm. because 
someone out there is there to listen, listen yes. today. Mm -hmm. okay. And Wonderfully Made Woman has joined the campaign. Mm -hmm. And you know, anything we join, we must make a move. Yes. And we're yes. making that move to stop FGM in the UK or everywhere, everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. We need to stop this. We need to stop it. I, just before we go, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Because I know today is also a busy day for you. Babe. No, it's fine. You decided that, oh, you know, I'm going to come. I appreciate that. I really, I know that you're everywhere in the community <laughs> yeah. helping women. You know, I, I appreciate the fact that you were able to Right come behind today. you, right behind thank you. you. Right thank behind you. Thank you. What you're, you're doing, yeah. You're a true, wonderful thank image. Thank you, woman. I am. You know, with our dance, she's always there. Mm. We have events, she'll be like, hey, you know, I'm going to come. And I'm sure that with the videos that you see, the flyers, we actually made the flyer with... With my photo yeah, in with it. with your yeah. photo in it. I know. And even the Manchester Maya project in Manchester. It is your, you know, I that know. dance that you did. You know, thank you so much thank for you. coming. Thank but you before for we go, yeah. what advice do you have for those who are still hiding in this pain and saying, I don't want to talk about it. I'm scared. I'm ashamed to talk about it. What advice do you have for them? Um, I'm sure there's millions and millions of women who have done it. But talk to each other. Talk to your friend. For example, I have friends that have gone through it. And since I started doing it, I've talked to them. If you don't want to talk to your friends, talk to your GP. And if mm. you talk to your GP, your GP, they will refer you to places that you can go and talk to people one by one. And then you might go to the hospital and then they can retreat it. They mm. do that. They can do surgery to retreat it, even though it's not going to be 100%. Mm. And don't be quiet because this is killing us. It's killing women. And most of us are losing our husbands. Yeah. Most of us are having miscarriage. Most of us are having kidney problems because of this. So the more we talk about it, the more awareness, the more everybody knows it's wrong. Wow. You heard it all. Okay. Don't stay silent. Don't stay silent. Speak out. Mm -hmm. Speak out about it. And and don't forget to come to Wonderfully Made Women's FGM campaign on the 29th right. of March, and in Richmond Grove, up, uh, behind the Longside uh, Long Police, Police Station. Station. That's going to be the last event. So if you've missed the two events we've had, 29th of March is going to be the last event for this quarter. Mm -hmm. Don't come after the event to say, oh, you know, I want to. You have an opportunity to see solicitors, to see experts, mm -hmm. to see, you never know. And if you are, you know, having problem with your visa because of this, is an opportunity to actually talk about, talk to those who have been helping other women with their immigration issues as a result of this FGM. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, at Manchester City Council, I would say thank you. You know, for funding this project, <laughs> for, for, for giving us that voice. Because it's one thing to want to do something, mm -hmm. and it's another thing to have resources for mm -hmm. it. We say thank you for giving us that voice. And if you're listening to us, please, this radio station, we need funding for it. Yeah, funding, so it doesn't please. stop. If you're yeah. enjoying our show, and you're saying that, you know, we enjoy this show. You know, so far we have enjoyed it. We want to be a part of it. Please do contact us. We need funding. We need this studio to be running. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if they close up, we're going to stop. And we don't want to stop. Please, please, we need people to, you know, support us. And on this note, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that have listened to this show today. And until same time next week, I will say have a blessed day and always remember that you are wonderfully made. Bye. Thank you. Oh, yeah,